All right, hello and welcome to another episode of Is That Trophy Worth It? Today we're going to be reviewing the game Shadow of Mordor, which was a Middle Earth, so Lord of the Rings, Hobbit type movie tie-in game. Although, I don't know if it actually ties in. I know there's elements of the movies. I don't know how much it ties in with a movie, though. Anyway, that's besides the point. Shadow of Mordor. The game is very, very good. It's so good that I got it twice, both on PS3 and PS4, because I had two separate accounts, so I got it twice. Because so I don't remember if trophy stacking was a thing between PS3 and PS4, because I didn't ever try to. There's only one other game I've got it on, on both platforms. If you get in the comments, I'll give you a cookie. Um, so... Let's get into this review, shall we? And we're going to start off by giving you a brief overview of the game. Um, so, obviously, this is a story-driven game, although I don't remember much of the story, and the story is probably the weak point in my mind. Because I know there's something about your wife and a son, and that's about it. <laughs> that's about all I remember. Um, and you're playing as a guy who has an elf guy... <laughs> Was it an elf in a ring? Probably. It's Lord of the Rings kind of tie-in, so it makes sense. <laughs> so, it's a little story, I remember, but most of the, the uh, uh, trophies... Well, there's quite a few trophies that are uh, just um, story, story-related story trophies. So, you know, you can easily get quite a few trophies just by playing through the story. Um, and that's well, I'm going to touch on from the, the story right now. So, um, back to the gameplay. It's very fluid. It's it's honestly such a fun game just to play. Not even to, like... Not even just, like, because of, like, the story and the... the like, just, just playing it feels nice for no reason. Just playing it like you have no goal. Just running around, being stealthy, doing the takeover mechanics, whatever... It just feels very nice. Um, and I must say, the orcs in this game, or Uruk, or whatever they are, Uruks, are very, very funny. They all have their own personalities, especially the captains. They are so funny. It's amazing. I love it. Um, and honestly, you could just sit there just talking to the or not talking to the orcs, but listening to the orcs talk, and you'd, you'd be having fun. So, if you can get away with that, it's, it's like the Marines in, like, Halo C, Halo 2, and Halo 3. Like, the Marines are the comedy relief, the Orcs are the comedic relief in this game. Um, and for a movie tie-in game, it is a good, good one. Like, one of the best, if not the best. Because movie tie-in games are notoriously quite bad, but this one, this one's a good one. Um, I, I honestly, like, just adore this game. So, I'm... I'm more than willing to recommend it to you all. Um, but this is a, a trophy list review. So let's move into the trophy list. Because I've spoken about the story related trophies, but there are many other trophies in the game. Um, and we'll start off with the platinum percentage, which is 16.24 on PSN profiles and 3 across PSN. This game took me personally on my second attempt, or second attempt, it makes it sound like I failed the first time, my second time going through it was two days and eight hours. Uh, the first time was probably about a week. It's uh, not the longest game, but if you, especially if you know what you're doing, but if you don't, if you don't know what you're doing, it's probably going to take quite a bit longer. I just know exactly where to go pretty much all times because I've done it before. Um... And there are two DLCs which I haven't played, but if you enjoy the game, I would assume you'd enjoy them as well, so you can always play them. Um, this game is coming up on eight years old, though. So, um, the the game's not going to ever get updated or anything like that, so you have to worry about updates, or because it's not a live service game like... Some of the other ones I've been talking about, especially Rocket League. That was probably the one that would. Or oh, our Siege. Now, in terms of difficulty of trophies, there aren't really any hard ones. There are some specific ones, like the rarest ones being perform an execution on a faming berserker, or help a captain survive a recruitment power struggle. Those are just, They aren't hard, they're just specific, and you have to actively go out your way to get them, 
that's why they're lower because you're not going to naturally get that or you might but it's rare and there's a reason that's that's the reason why it's rarer than you know say like capitalize on a war chief's fear which naturally you might do but naturally i did because well it's the easiest way to kill them but you know <laughs> um yeah so it's not hard it's not hard just to do the specific trophies e either way um yeah so there's the branding um stuff which is very very fun and intuitive and some trophies require you to use it or well, most um trophies require you to use it what some of them are quite a, a bit a bit annoying like brand all five bodyguards of a war chief because if one of those bodyguards end up dying and then replaced and you have to redo it which can be annoying but it's not the end of the world it is it's really fun this one's a really fun one after it kills you to become a captain help him become, become a war chief and then kill him it's just like that is just so mean and i love it it's a really good trophy i think the rarest trophy is liberate 30 slaves in 180 seconds I'm sure there's a specific way that you had to do it, and I'm sure there's a YouTube video for it. Um, because 30 slaves in 180 seconds while riding Carol is a bit specific. Very, very specific. But I'm sure isn't that hard. Just you have to go for it. And you do have to do side missions. Um, yeah, you have to do all of the side missions, so keep in mind... In, uh, just do them as you do them uh, as you play through the game even it's it's helpful to do it anyway so i mean just just do it <laughs> uh the runes can be annoying achieving a certain level or is can be annoying but they're not super bad and then it's just complete more side quests do all the uh our forge towers which are just uh what is it the synchronization points kind of so this game kind of plays like an Assassin's Creed game in a way, but definitely, definitely a good one, <laughs> not, a, not a terrible one. So that is the trophy list in of itself and the game, because there's not much more to talk about because I've spoken about the different trophies because quite a bit of it is just side stuff, specific stuff and story stuff. Like the specific stuff I'm not going to sit here talking about because that would ruin it, and then the side missions and the story explain themselves. So, that means it's time to give you my ratings. 9 out of 10 for gameplay, because, well, the reason it's not 10 is the story, and probably should be 8, because I don't remember much of the story at all. If it's a good game, I remember the story. Like, I haven't played a game of I played for a long time, and I remember the story. Um... <laughs> Good question. Infamous First Light, I do. Or uh, uh, Cat Quest 2, Cat Quest 1. Remember both of them. So, you know, if it's got a good story, I'll remember it. <laughs> but it has, it has enough to keep you going. Definitely a good filler game for if you're uh, looking for a short game in between maybe a, a longer form game. Like, you know, you, I don't know, an Elden Ring or something, if you're waiting for that. And waiting for that, I mean, you're waiting to buy it or download it or whatever. So, 9 out of 10 for gameplay, 8 out of 10 for trophy list. Um, so just because a little bit, some of them can be quite annoying. Specifically that one where it's um, brand all five of the War Chief's bodyguards, because just it can be annoying if one of them dies and then just return. So, yeah. That is it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.